It's the Nighttime Show with your host, Stephen Kramer Glickman. Here with us always, my dearest friend and compadre, Mr. Matt Walker. Today on the show, we are live from the Beverly Hilton with Michelin star awarded chef, Chef Filippo, his wonderful and uh, talented sister, uh, Zizi. Close, I'm getting close. And then... His uh, his friend and uh, and partner in uh, in crime and this whole thing, Michelangelo. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the nighttime show. That was pretty good. I, I look. I'm better. not Mike. I'm not Mike Black, but I'm trying it's my best. Better. Um, yeah. This is an amazing honor to have you have you guys here. Uh, the other night, here's how this went down. The other night, for uh, right after the Oscars, I got to have dinner, and it was uh, prepared by uh, by Chef Filippo, and it was uh, it, it was the most insane dinner I've ever had. I'm still recovering <laughs> from this dinner. It was outrageous dinner. Can we walk through what the what the menu was like uh, for for that evening? Can we just well. talk about it for just a second? Sure, yeah. definitely. Do you, do, you remember, uh, do you remember what it was? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, we had to do the introduction of every dish, so I think we remember very well. <laughs> uh, uh, so, real quick, I ha- I may have it here on my phone that we can we can. I, I took pictures of it because I was I was <laughs> so completely. I actually took pictures of your menu, okay. uh, of like of the yeah. way that your menu is prepared. Is this is Easy. that pretty much my right? Menu, my menu, my technical menu. All right, so what, what came first that night? The first time is uh, happiness for the um, panino with uh, mortadella and um, crema di pistacchio, cream, pistacchio cream and uh, cheese, oh cacio cavallo God. cheese. Oh, my Lord. It was insane. It was insane. It was very small. It was like a little mini sandwich, and it was absolutely incredible. What, what was after that? Yeah, um, crema di zucca. Uh, with a uh, un uh, cubo nero di zola, un formaggio italiano fantastico. And uh, then it was a cream, like a soup, but then inside it was a beautiful square of a blue cheese, uh, and a special blue cheese bring from, brought from Italy. Where, wow. d- where did you... No, no, this blue cheese was not just a piece of blue cheese. It was, uh, d- it was bl- like fried. It was fried. fried. It was fried yeah. blue cheese. Wow. Yeah, it's no joke. Uh, yeah, good. but it was fried, <laughs> and then when you break it, and the whole thing yeah. inside melted oh, out, uh, I God, mean, and insane. mixed with the soup. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I've never seen anything like that. What about what, what was next? What was next? Il prossimo è l'astice con le mele e il calvados. Then you had the lobster with apples. Okay. Yeah. Did you I eat that? Uh, no, they brought they they made me something else instead. Okay. I believe because you're kosher, you can't <laughs> yeah, eat that. Yeah, I, I was eat, like, you I can't eat, eat that. that piece. <laughs> I know, everyone else though loved it. <laughs> everyone else is like, that's great. I love yeah. lobster. <laughs> what yeah. what did we have after that? The la um e la Caesar salad e il veni vidi vici e la Caesar salad secondo me. I, know, I came, style. I saw, I conquered. That's what I picked up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Exactly. I know that. Nice. Exactly. Nice. There was the Italian version I of came, the Caesar salad. I came, I saw, I croutoned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? What was it? The Italian version of the Caesar salad. Right. And his version of the Caesar salad. Which is actually Mexican in origin, by the way, Caesar salad. Uh, really? Invented in Tijuana. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. oh, my God. It was wow. invented in Tijuana. The Caesar salad. By a guy named Caesar. That's why it's called the Caesar salad. Are you serious? Serious, hundred percent serious. Look it up. Google it. <laughs> Matt. Matt is a <laughs> huge food nerd. He knows. Oh. Yeah. All right. Keep. Keep it. What else? What did we get? What else we get? Questo è il piatto invece a cui sono più affezionato. Si chiama Reginetta. This dish is called Reginetta. Okay. Well. È un piatto che ho fatto pensando a una delle mie attrici preferite, Sofia Loren. Eh, Sofia Loren. Yeah, this uh, he made this dish thinking about one of the best, I mean the actress that she, uh, his favorite <laughs> mm-hmm. actress which was Sofia Loren. E vi racconto il perché è nato il piatto. And he will say how the dish was uh, born. È nato perché lei quando vinse l'Oscar uh, la intervistarono e gli dissero "Come si sente da italiana a vincere l'Oscar?" Uh, when she won the Oscars, uh, they asked her, how do, you th- uh, how do you feel being an Italian winning an Oscar? 
E lei rispose semplicemente I'm not Italian, I'm Napolitan. <ride> And she answered I'm not Italian, I'm Napolitan. <ride> oh my god, that's amazing. Wow. Which one's this one? Quindi è pasta con il uh, ragù alla napoletana. I, I guess you got that. Pasta ragù, yes. Napolitan pasta ragù. Yep, yep. E dopo ci sono praticamente i, i tortelli, i ravioli. Then you had the raviolis. Ravioli di, con la crema di parmigiano. With the parmesan cream. Con la salsa allo zafferano. With the sauce, uh, the saffron, saffron sauce. E lo sobuco all'interno dei ravioli. And then also buco inside the ravioli. You told us something about the saffron for that night too. That yeah, was... yeah, that, yes, that yes, dish yes. was called or is called the gold of l'aquila. Uh, yeah. L'Aquila is a small, beautiful place uh, in Italy, close to Rome. Actually, a few years ago, they had an earthquake, a big earthquake there. And uh, saffron comes from there. And uh, it's so precious. That's why it's called gold <laughs> from mm -hmm. L'Aquila. It's because to make just a gram of the saffron, you need so many, many, many plants. Yeah. So actually, to, to, to explain to you how, how big it is, it can cost up to 20,000 euros a yeah. kilo. Oh, that's wow. wow. Oh, my God. È chiamato l'oro rosso. Yeah. It's called the, 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 the red gold. So, so don't smuggle cocaine. Smuggle saffron in. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you guys also mentioned about the pasta, too, that something was really interesting about the way that, the, the, that it was hung. It was, they, they hang it by the, by the ocean? Is that true? Was that yeah, no, no, no. It's actually true. And the pasta that we have, it's a pasta that, you know, all the pasta that you see in supermarkets and yeah. everywhere, it's a pasta that has been dried in two, three hours. Yeah. I mean, really uh, quick okay. and a high temperature. So it's almost cooked and that forms some crystals inside the pasta. Mm -hmm. Then then when you try to eat it al dente, it's really al hard dente. to eat it al dente. That's why yeah. maybe in America, al dente is not that famous or that uh, fa it's not a favorite way to eat the pasta. Mm -hmm. But then our pasta has been dry for 36 hours, okay, mm -hmm. longer, uh, with the uh, ocean breeze uh, close to it and a temperature that it's uh, kind of low okay mm -hmm. so when the pasta dries it's actually not cooked and then when you open the package and you cook it then is when you cook the pasta it takes up, up to 17 minutes sometimes to wow. cook it and yeah. now you can eat al dente because you don't have those crystals inside the pasta wow it's interesting it's not amazing yeah. <laughs> it's so amazing yeah. all right what, else, what what came next what came next Next è il um, branzino con uh, il giardino di verdure, perché un piatto, oltre che buono, deve essere anche bello. Yes, that's a sea bass that has a garden of vegetables in it. Oh. Uh, say vegetables, Tiziana, she loves to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, here, here, here. Say Come vegetable, on. Tiziana. <laughs> no. Michelangelo is uh, terrible. My <laughs> pronunciation is terrible because uh, I say uh, vegetables. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> vegetables. Io dico direttamente verdure, così non mi sbaglio. He says directly veggies. That's veggies. it. <laughs> veggies. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. What did we uh, What did we end up with next after next. the after the sea bass? Where are we at? Questo è un piatto ancora della tradizione italiana, è il manzo all'olio e il um, con la patata alla senape. So it's still a tradition dish, a traditional Italian dish. Uh, this is veal with uh, patata alla uh, senape, potatoes potato. and uh, the sauce of uh, senape, which is... Uh, mustard. 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 Yeah, mustard. Yeah, yeah, mustard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mustard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that è l'insalata di spinaci cruda con il formaggio parmigiano reggiano che ovviamente non può mai mancare it's a raw spinach, <laughs> uh, raw spinach salad with uh, parmesan uh, mm -hmm. cheese on top mm -hmm. ok All right. uh, what, what do we got left what do we got left left why and what, what, what's, what else is there more more uh, is everything <laughs> Oh, uh, but then you did. Sì, sì, sì. Dopo ci sono i dolci. You guys all did, also did dessert too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the dessert yeah. comes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what was the dessert that night? The dessert. The dessert dell'altra sera c'era il bicchierin. Il bicchierin. That you had the bicchierin. It's called. That's a small drink. Che era yes. una. What was in the small drink? Bicchierin. Uh, cosa era dentro? Dentro c'era del cacao. 
Uh, it was cocoa, I mean chocolate. Yeah. E um, un, un, uh, uno scotch alla, alla mela. And then you have a scotch, uh, apple scotch. Oh. Wow. <laughs> My God. <laughs> <laughs> and then you guys did this strawberry thing. It was like strawberries yeah, yeah, with yeah. a thing. What was, what was that? L'altro invece era un crumble. It's the craziest meal I've ever yeah. had in my life. <laughs> well, it's not like I had this and then the next night had the same meal. Yeah. You know, it's not. Yeah. You were Wendy's the next night. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I had Marie Callender's earlier in the day. Yeah. It was nowhere close to as good. Um, sorry, Marie Callender's, if you're listening. It's okay. Uh, L'altro invece era un crumble <laughs> alla mela, alla, um, un crumble alle fragole. nocciole, un no. crumble alle nocciole con uh, una tagliata di fragole, quindi con delle fragole, fragole in Macedonia, gelato alla vaniglia, aria di menta e una cialda um, di lingua di gatto. Ok, let me see if I remember Come all on, that. Michelangelo, I believe uh, in you. Uh, Come on. I got the vanilla gelato. That, well. There we okay. go. Thank you, Gatto. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so we have some, of course, strawberries. Right. Okay, you have some crumbles of uh, biscotti. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you have some, uh, what he calls an air of mint, yeah. which is amazing. It's, yeah. uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's a foam uh, made out of mint. Yeah, foam. And then we had also... Gelato, ice cream. Uh, ice cream, well, he said oh, that. Yeah. Ice cream. <laughs> a, a, a beautiful uh, vanilla ice cream made in-house that night at that moment. Oh, my yeah. God. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a uh, chambella. It's a, a, a small, like, an, um, it's, it's a really thin uh, uh, pastry. Yes. Made with the hazelnuts. Wow! wow. Yeah. Sounds amazing. It was it was yeah. outrageous. Why didn't you invite me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> next time, Matt. Yeah. Next time you'll so, come with me. How did you get started in, in cooking? Ho iniziato molto giovane. E avevo circa 15 anni. Però il fatto di sapere di voler diventare uno chef è stato anche principalmente grazie a mia sorella. Uh, he started very, very young. Actually, when he was 15 years old, he started, he loved uh, cooking. And then uh, he pursued his passion. Did, did you have family that cooked a lot too? Or? Assolutamente sì. Mia mamma cucina per tutti noi e per le nostre famiglie. Quindi è una grande chef. E lei lo chef. So, yes, absolutely, yes. Uh, my mom is the one who cooks for everybody. She is an amazing cook. And he says that actually my mom is the chef. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, right? Uh, that, no, that's amazing. What was your favorite dish when you were a kid? Was there a dish when you were growing up that was your favorite? Il piatto favorito? Il mio piatto favorito è banale. È il minestrone di verdure. It's really simple. It's a vegetables uh, minestrone. <laughs> yeah. I like. That's yeah. his favorite. What about you, Michelangelo? What was your favorite when you were a kid? Ah, when I was a kid. Delizia limone. Thank you, Chef. That was exactly, <laughs> exactly that one. Delizia limone, which Chef Filippo prepares for me sometimes. It's amazing because it's uh, made with a beautiful cream of lemon. And it's, uh, that tradition was started, if I'm not mistaken, in Capri, Amalfi Coast. Amalfi, Amalfi Coast. Amalfi Coast. Mm -hmm. Because they have uh, those beautiful lemons that they look like a big giant coconut, believe it or not. <laughs> wow. wow. Yellow. <laughs> and uh, the skin of the lemon is being used to do the famous limoncello. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then also from there is born the, this delizia limone that Chef Filippo does. It's I can't talk. It's uh, my wa my mouth is watering. <laughs> wow. What wow. about what about what about you, uh, Tsitsi? I prefer spaghetti, spaghetti with tomato sauce. <laughs> 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 no, mi no, without meatball. Yeah, no, no meatball. Meat separate. Yes, yeah, separate. Yeah, separate. Yeah. Matt, what about you? What was the uh, the your your favorite thing when you were a kid? Pancakes. Really? Pancakes and bacon. <laughs> Pancakes my favorite and bacon. thing. It's still Just your favorite thing. Still my favorite thing, pretty much, yeah. I know. When I was a kid, it, my mom used to make potato latkes. Do you know what those mm -hmm. are? They're like uh, potato pancakes. Very Jewish. Very Jewish. Oh. She would make the, uh, they were the be They were my favorite thing. They're, they're still probably one of my favorite things. I don't think I can eat those anymore. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they were. Yeah, them, yeah, I don't think I'm allowed to have them anymore. But they were, they were very good. They made me uh, physically who I am today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. So when uh, where do, where did you uh, both grow up? What what part of the world were where were you? Dove 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 voi avete cresciuto in Italia? Noi siamo cresciuti in Basilicata, sud Italia. Uh, they were bro- uh, grown. They were grown in uh, uh, the Basilicata, which is uh, south of Italy. Wow. Well, do you? Uh, when's the last time you went back? Do you go back home very often, or not? Very Quando è stata l'ultima volta che siete stato lì? Andate a casa molto spesso, no? Um, the last time is in August because we have a part of family, and uh, but we live now in uh, Trentino Alto Adige, in north of Italy. Wow. The family. Uh, is uh, in Trentino Alto Adige and yeah. also the job, our job. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, now you've lived in lots of places around the around the world. Um, you b- b- have you both lived in lots of places together? Tutte due hanno visto fuori Wait, wait, before we wait, wait, before we get into places you've lived. Brother and sister, right? Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, I. I didn't. I didn't realize that when, the other night, and that is uh, fascinating. How did you? How did? How did this happen? How did you? Who came, Who started first? Who, chi ha cominciato who started prima, cooking first? Chi ha cominciato prima? Chi ha fatto prima dei vot de voi due? Beh, ho cominciato prima io, però poi mi ero reso conto che mi mancava qualcosa e quindi ho chiamato subito lei. Quindi uh, I, I, he's the one who started first, but then uh, he realized that something was missing and definitely he called his sister. Oh wow, really? Siamo abituati a lavorare insieme. Lui cucina, io sono in sala. Non sono solo il sommelier, mi occupo del servizio di sala. So they're, they're used to work together now and uh, she is not only the, the sommelier, of course, oh, but yeah. she also is the one who works in the sala and the salon where everything is happening. Wow. wow. Oh, that's so great. Tu l'altra sera hai visto i piatti vanno raccontati? E vanno saputi anche spiegare, altrimenti non sono niente. Uh, as uh, he was explaining, it's that uh, last night, and you were the last night, uh, you yeah. were the other night there, where every dish was introduced, and she was the one who introduced every dish because yeah. he names the dishes and she explained why he named it that way. Mm-hmm. Wow! E poi finisco e lei li racconta con, uh, innanzitutto con professionalità, ma poi li racconta ed è anche la mia prima assaggiatrice dei piatti che faccio e poi li racconta anche con un po' di amore fraterno. Yeah, so not only she introduces the dishes, but uh, she also tastes the dishes before. She loves it. Wow. And uh, when she says the story, she, uh, or, yeah, the story of the dish, she not only is a very professional one, but also she loves and she puts the passion in saying it. Yeah, of course, there is a... There is a <laughs> 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 it's the sister and brother thing, you know. I love it. Hey, um, man, this is a lot of fun. Are you having a good time there, Matt I'm Walker? I'm having a great time. Man, oh, man, do I love uh, recording episodes of the Nighttime Show podcast. But you know what I love doing even more than that? What do you love more than that? Popping open a bottle of Fireball whiskey, which I happen to have with me right here. <laughs> that and is you a know bottle what? of Fireball. It is. It's a big bottle. It says Fireball whiskey, and it is yummy, yum, yums, uh, cinnamon flavor. I'm actually, I don't know if you... I don't know if you can hear it, but if I hold up the bottle, you can hear the bottle talk. Hang you on, can't I'm hear a bottle hold. talk. Wait, shh. Just listen real quiet. Oh, what's happening, everybody? How y'all doing tonight? Hey, there's my Whoa. bottle of Fireball hey, whiskey. That bottle's talking. That's that's a crazy. real bottle that can talk. Yeah, that's well, amazing. What's happening, Matt? You said you were having a good time, right? I am having a good time. You want to have a great time? Yeah, you want to have a great time? You got to... Pop the, we're going to pop this bottle up, and I'm going to put you in my mouth. Yeah. You ready for that? Oh, I've been ready my whole bottle oh, up. Oh, I want oh. you so deep down my oh. throat. Here oh. we go. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it all. Oh. Give it to Here me, baby. I'm, I'm opening it. Oh, can you smell it? Oh, go. <laughs> well, you swallowed that whole bottle of Fireball. That's amazing. Well, it was a, a nice, it was a lot of Fireball, and it's down in my belly. You, are you down there? Steven, this is a blast, man. Thanks for swallowing me. Hey, how's it going in my uh, in my stomach? How is it down there? Oh, it's really great. Hey, did you go to In-N-Out? <laughs> I did. Oh, man, lucky me. Yeah, you bet. Enjoy some of that, buddy. Those are for ya, for y'all. <laughs> this is great, man. Let's get y'all. loose. Let's get loose. Let's have a good time. I'm gonna shake my belly around. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, you see a TV guide in there? Yeah. 
Whoa, yeah, actually yeah, I do. One of the it's dog a TV guy. There's a TV and a TV in there. Turn around, you can see it yeah. on the wall. Cool. Um, it's Sanyos, I believe. <laughs> Sanyos <laughs> Fireball. What do you see on the TV? Oh my gosh, look at me. What is this a, get out is it are you, is it an old episode you, of Quantum oh, Leap? Yeah. Whoa, is he ever gonna get back? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but enjoy that, buddy. And thanks for being in my stomach. Fireball whiskey. It's a party in your stomach and a party in your heart. Fireball whiskey. Bye. All right, let's get back to the show. Uh, so, Titi, now well, that you're in California right now and you're an expert in wine, how do you compare wines in California to wines in Italy? Wow. Be brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about wine, so you can tell me either way. <laughs> allora, io amo tantissimo la California perché ha dei vini eccezionali. E, però anche noi, insomma, abbiamo dei grandi vini, soprattutto rossi. E, e io in particolar modo amo il Barolo. She, she really loves and appreciates the, the wine in California because California has amazing wines. But also in Italy, we have uh, very nice wines, uh, above everything, the red wines, and uh, particularly uh, she loves the Barolo. Mm -hmm. Wow. Are there any wines in Italy sold in a box? <laughs> they sell any box wines. Does that Do happen you know in Italy? Is that just California? Box wines? <laughs> Do you know they make box yeah. wine here in, in uh, America? Non lo so se voi sapete, ma in America se fanno anche il vino dentro la scatola. No, no, anche la birra. Anche la birra. Ah, she saw also the beer she saw in a box. No, no. Il vino, il vino si fa in vigna. The wine is being made in a winery. Uh -huh. E poi è importantissimo la cantina. And then, of course, inside the, ca the, the canteen where they <laughs> bottle the thing. No, in box. No, in box. never in a box. No, not in a box. You no heard box. it here. Not in a box. <laughs> Wines in a bottle. <laughs> what are the, what are the, uh, pos the pl positives of working brother and sister together? What are the positives? Um, C'è un, un feeling particolare. Eh, lui è molto severo quando lavora, non è più mio fratello, diventa l'executive chef, eh, però noi ci capiamo, non c'è bisogno di parole, eh, c'è un'intesa particolare, basta guardarsi. Uh, it's a very particular feeling working together. Uh, when he works in the kitchen, he's not his brother, her brother anymore. <laughs> Now he's the executive chef. Uh, he's very, very strict and severe on this and uh, but uh, they, they don't need to talk anymore they with the just with the view I mean they see each other they understand each other yeah oh I can imagine e poi se c'è qualcosa che non va anche se sbaglia un collaboratore se la prende con me <laughs> and she says that even that something doesn't go well doesn't go well mm -hmm. then even though that the mistake wasn't made by her but somebody else he goes to her and she he, he Sono la sua valvola di sfogo. Really? Oh sure. So as we say in the US, she's a stress reliever. As we say yes. in the US the buck stops with her. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So we, you you're from if I want to hear it from the chef as well. Yeah. So what are the n positives and negatives of working with your sister? Che cosa positiva e negativa di lavorare con tua con tua sorella? Positivo è che sono sempre sicuro che i miei piatti vengono spiegati e alle, alle persone e fatti, fatti mangiare bene, insomma. Uh, pos uh, positively it's the fact that she re that he's relaxed because she, uh, he knows that the dish is going to be explained in the right way to the people. Yeah. No, that's understandable. Negativo è che è vero. <laughs> <laughs> Negativo è che invece è, è vero, è la mia valvola di sfogo e quindi molte volte la tratto male ingiustamente. And the negative part of this is that she is really her, he is a stress relief, but um, unfortunately sometimes he is unfair to her. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Makes makes sense. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. Now, uh when you started you said you started cooking at 15. When you started cooking professionally, was that at 15 like that's your first job as a cook? Uh, quando sei cominciato, hai detto 15 anni, ma quando hai cominciato professionalmente? A 18 anni ho iniziato già in maniera professionale perché ho capito che era la mia passione, era la mia, la mia vita, quindi io amo il mio lavoro e sono fortunato.
he started at 18 years old because mm -hmm. he loves what he does, uh, what he do, and uh, he loves the way he cooks. And yeah, he started mm -hmm. at 18 years old. Wow. And then how long did you work there in Italy? And then you, I know you were in the Navy, I believe, right? And then did that take you around the world or, or how did that work? Tu sei stato in Marina, ha capito lui, allora ti ha portato a... Assolutamente, perché oltre a cucinare mi piaceva anche viaggiare e quindi ho unito le due cose. Poi quando ho capito che la marina diventava più importante della cucina, allora ho salutato e ho continuato a cucinare. Definitely, because he not, not only loves cook, but, uh, cooking, but he also loves to travel. Mm -hmm. But when uh, he was in the Navy and then he realized that the Navy it's, uh, were beca was becoming more important than cooking, then he said bye to the Navy and keep on cooking. Yeah. Wow. What a, what, now, when you were uh, cooking for the Navy, where were you stationed to be able to do something like that? Dove, quando cucinava per la marina, dove era stazionato ogni volta che faceva? Mm, no, eravamo praticamente, giravamo il mondo in realtà, non siamo mai stati fermi in un posto. But we really never stayed uh, fit in one place, we were traveling all around the world. Wow, mm -hmm. amazing. So how do you end up going from... Uh, where you know where you're you know traveling around with, you know with the navy to being in dubai can you kind of walk us to that from that story through that story come sei arrivato dalla marina dopo arrivato a dubai il passaggio è stato un po' più lungo però io ho lasciato la marina e ho iniziato a capire che se volevo diventare veramente bravo dovevo iniziare a viaggiare e ho scelto dubai perché mi incuriosiva Uh, once he left the Navy, then he said, well, I'm going gonna, gonna to be a really professional chef. That's what I want to be. So the only way to do it is I need to travel around the world. And uh, he chose Dubai because it was very curious for him. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Now, wait. Hang on. Hang on just a second. Um, <laughs> I, we, were, we were doing some reading earlier today, and it said... We saw on the uh, on the internet that you had worked under uh, some some you know to to get experience. You worked yeah. under some very famous chefs. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's let me just bring these guys up really quick before we move on. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, he, will you tell me his name just so I don't. Gual Gualtiero Marchesi. Gualtiero Marchesi. Gualtiero Marchesi. Wow, bravissimo. Bravo. Bella pronuncia. Not bad. Not bad. bad. Not, not bad. Not bad. Was like, Gualtiero Marchesi was, uh, he was an, uh, uh, the Italian uh, Michelin star chef at the Alberta, Alber Alberta? Alberta. Al Alberta restaurant. Yeah. Okay. And but he and so he was your mentor. Was he one yeah. of your mentors? Yes. Is yes. he you have an, you have other another mentor as well? No, il uh, mentore vero è stato lui. Poi ho avuto tanti maestri perché io credo che uh, nel nostro mestiere c'è da imparare da tutti, anche dal signore o dalla signora che lava i piatti. Um, definitely he was his mentor, his real mentor, but uh, uh, he has had so many masters <laughs> and uh, teachers. And uh, one of the things that he thinks is that uh, not only you learn from these big people, you only also learn from the people that wash the dishes and everything. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You know, in, in, uh, in our business, in the comedy business, it's, all, it's very... It's, in similar in the sense that you learn from the greats and the and the great comedians and the great people but you also learn from the new people and you learn from the the waiters and from mm -hmm. the bartender you learn so much from all the different pieces of the puzzle you know and the and the best way to be the top to be the top of your game is to know every like all the positions but you know below you and around you and stuff so that way you have respect for them but you know um What was your friendship like with him? Was it a friendly thing uh, with uh, la tua relazione con lui? Come è Marchese, stata? Cosa was it fre de, de amici, no, 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 friendly, <laughs> no, 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 no,
Well, uh, well, you heard that it was <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah, no, I can <laughs> a friend. <laughs> he was he really, really was his teacher, and he still now uh, 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 see, look at him as a, uh, a god in mm. this earth. <laughs> Yeah, right. A mio giudizio sì, a mio giudizio è ancora il miglior, uno dei migliori cuochi al mondo, viventi. Uh, and uh, he believes that he is still one, one of the best uh, chefs in the world right now. What, it, can you just, is there one, I, I mean I know it's, a hard, it's hard to, you know, boil it down to this, but is there one thing that he, that you learned from him from Marchesi that you could share with our audience? C'è qualcosa particolarmente che hai imparato da lui? Qualcosa, hai imparato molte cose, ma una particolare che ti rimane? Ho imparato il rispetto per l'alimento e la ricerca spasm- e la ricerca sempre migliore, migliore della materia prima. E, e fant- no, dover migliorare, dover cercare la materia prima. È questo che io faccio anche al palato ora. La ricerca della materia prima eccellente. He learns from him so many things, but one of the most important was the respect for the food and how to choose, pick and choose the right uh, elements, the right mm-hmm. ingredients, okay, in order to make an, an excellent dish. Wow, mm-hmm. incredible. And um, uh, I would be remiss yeah. without mentioning uh, Chef Monsieur... Monsieur. Monsieur... Rob- Robuchon. Robuchon, okay. the French chef that you worked yes. under as well. Who was harder? Who was harder to, to work for? Qual è stato più... <laughs> Allora, sicuramente Marchesi, perché eh, Robuchon, ho lavorato presso Robuchon, ma io non l'ho neanche visto per quanto era lontano praticamente da noi, assolutamente. So, definitely for him, Marchesi, even though the Bouchon, I mean, he couldn't see him physically because he was so far away from him. Oh in, my! In the chain. <laughs> really? <laughs> c'erano, c'erano minimo, minimo 20 cuochi tra me e lui ogni volta. Between the both of them were at least 20, 20 cooks. <laughs> uh, between wow! Him and <laughs> oh my Lord! Però la Francia è un passaggio obbligato per ogni persona che vuol diventare cuoco. But anybody who wants to become a chef definitely has to go to France to learn some mm-hmm. stuff there. Um, what about, uh, no, Matt, I mean, oh, I really, I really want to get into Dubai and talk about mm-hmm. Dubai because I've, I've never been to Dubai. I've read a lot about <laughs> yeah. it. It seems like a very interesting, amazing place. What, uh, when did you move to Dubai? Uh, quando te, te, te hai spostato per il Dubai? Quando? Io a Dubai sono partito nel 2000 e credo nel 2008-2009 e mi sono fermato lì per uh, 3-4 anni. He moved to Dubai in 2008-2009 and then he stopped there for about 4 years. Non sanno mangiare a Dubai però, eh. so che è così ma non sanno mangiare. Uh, he says that in Dubai <laughs> they don't know how to eat. <laughs> they don't know how to eat? No, <laughs> no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> Then you could go there and no, show no, them a no, thing no, or two, no. Steve. I could show them. I could show them how to eat. Um, so di non dire, so, so di non dire una cosa bella, ma è vero, perché io ho cucinato per uh, i principi, per, uh, per tutti, per, uh, per, quel, per il pubblico che conta in Dubai, ma mangiano veramente, veramente male. He knows that it's a really, you know, it's not a good thing to say that they don't know how to eat in Dubai. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. But, uh, They're not ha- listening. <laughs> He has cooked for princes and all this royalty, and uh, but still they don't know how to eat. That's all right. Uh, Italy is listening. We have a lot yes. of fans in Italy, so oh, nice. and so do you, and so. Yeah. Do you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have a couple questions. So let's say somebody is just a home cook. What should they have in their kitchen at all times? What should they have stocked? Hai uh, una domanda, se certo. tu sei solo tranquillo a casa e tu non sei un chef, sei solo certo. una persona, che devi avere in cucina sempre? Sempre devi avere un pezzo di parmigiano reggiano, una bottiglia d'olio e del pomodoro e ovvi- ovviamente della pasta. Always have a parmesan cheese, mm-hmm. ok? Uh, olive oil. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, pasta. Pasta, definitely pasta. And definitely uh, tomatoes. tomatoes. <laughs> okay. So when you have ingredients like this, you talk about, say, Parmesan cheese. There's Parmigiana Reggiana from Italy, which is very expensive, especially here in the U.S. Yeah. 
are there ingredients like that, like, say, balsamic vinegar? Real balsamic vinegar is very, very expensive. But here in the U.S., we have this sort of, like, balsamic-flavored red wine vinegar is what it is, right? So on ingredients, are there things where you say you should spend your money for sure on this thing, but on this other thing, you can get away with the cheaper version. It's going to be okay. Uh, what happens with the ingredients is that, for example, Parmesan cheese, it's very expensive. It's yeah. not that it's very expensive. It's the real price of the Parmesan yeah. cheese. Because sometimes it, uh, there was an article a few months ago where it says that the, most of the Parmesan cheese that comes to U.S. have a, at least 40% of uh, uh, wood cellulose. Yeah, it's fake. It's fake. <laughs> yeah. So that's why you can buy a kilo or a pound of uh, Parmesan cheese for $3. I mean, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. So, um, uh, and then the same with the balsamic vinegar. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the opportunity to have one of the most beautiful balsamic vinegar that it's a Malpighi. And uh, actually, it's the oldest uh, family doing balsamic vinegar in Modena. Mm -hmm. uh, they have kept the tradition for almost 600 years, and wow. they pass it on from generation to generation. Actually, it's so beautiful. Uh, we have a doc documentary in our webpage in ilpalatoitaliano.it. Uh, which is amazing, where the, the father teaches the son at the early age of four years old how mm -hmm. to start, you know, uh, making the balsamic vinegar. And remember, it's not that it's expensive, but to get a liter, a liter of yeah. balsamic vinegar, you need a hundred liters yes. of yeah. wine. So wow. it's and it's a process that goes from two, three years mm -hmm. to 120, 150 yeah. years. Oh, my so, God. Unbelievable. So Unbelievable. when you – and that's one of the things that Il Palato Italiano wants to do in America. Mm -hmm. It's to educate uh, people about these kind of things because the, 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 the brand made in Italy, it's so huge in the world mm -hmm. that – but we Italians are the ones that doesn't use it that, that, that often. It's, mm -hmm. it's the least people that we use is the, the, that brand name. It's us. So we're trying to teach people uh, about the real, real, real food, the real ingredients, the real way to eat this kind of products, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, because it's fine that in America you have fettuccine alfredo with chicken, sure. you know? And everybody swears that that's an Italian dish, <laughs> but it's not. Right. <laughs> Italian right. style. It's, yeah. it's yeah. nice. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's good, yeah. but it's not an Italian dish. So mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't need to stop there. Mm -hmm. But we need to go beyond, and we need to go beyond yeah. the ingredients, beyond how do you do it. And that's the mission of Il Palato Italiano, mm -hmm. Chef Filippo, Tiziana, and all the staff, and the whole staff. I credo che dico una cosa perché è importante. Io amo l'America, e amo gli americani, e ci sto benissimo in America. E credo che gli americani meritano di mangiare meglio. Il Palato Italiano fa questo. Uh, he says that he loves American people. He <laughs> loves the United States of America. I mean, he's in love with the United States. And he really feels that the United States deserves to eat better. I mean, to eat uh, mm -hmm. the Italian food, of course, in the right way. And that's what Il Palato Italiano wants to do. I, I'm 100% I support it. I think you guys, I, I think I really believe that you guys should have a restaurant here in Los Angeles. And I know that's something that you guys are discussing, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, uh, I I mean, I've had a lot of meals in my life, <laughs> but I've never experienced anything like that night. That was complete. And it wasn't even like, look, there were other celebrity people around the table, but I couldn't have given two shits about <laughs> most of the people that were sitting around the table because because it, it, they were like inconsequential the to food the food. The, the food was the star that uh. night, one hundred percent. I I didn't even talk. Uh, what's the uh, who's the guy from Eight Mile that was there? Um, uh, I can't yeah. remember. Mackay Pfeiffer was was there. He was sitting two seats over. I didn't even realize he was sitting there <laughs> until the dinner was over. Like, wow. and I'm a huge fan of Mackay Pfeiffer. Like, I'm a big, a big Mackay Pfeiffer fan. I'm a, I'm a Pfeiffer fan. Yeah. A, people say that. People refer to you're me. Also yeah. that, huge. They say I'm a Pfeiffer fan. You know, you're a huge Mackay Pfeiffer huge, fan, and you're, huge. you're also huge. Oh, real nice, real nice. <laughs> I'm definitely a Pfeiffer fan, and uh, and then yeah. I didn't I didn't even talk to him because I was I was obsessed, obsessed with the food with the and the fish 
that night. It was the it was it was uh, it was the sea bass. Sea bass. And it was amazing. I've had sea bass here in Los Angeles at restaurants, and I'm like, bah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so ama- it was amazing. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's my that's my review. Oh, thank uh, you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Um, a well, few more a few more kitchen questions for you. Yes, yes. He's Besides got real kitchen questions, because <laughs> I, I cook a lot at home. Like I enjoy cooking. I watch a lot of cooking shows on TV, so I like making stuff. But so besides your knife, what is the most important thing in your kitchen? Uh, oltre del cortello, qual è l'altra cosa che è più importante in la cucina? <laughs> Because everyone says their knife is number one, right? That's the number one Cortal, thing. Tutti quanti dicono che il cortello è numero uno. Ma Very vero. good question. <laughs> <laughs> è importantissimo, per, secondo me, la, la concentrazione. È, è importantissimo sempre, la cosa che non deve mancare mai, quando si cucina lo si deve fare per qualcuno, altrimenti si sta facendo solo da mangiare. Uh, other than the knife, uh, what he says that it's very, very important is to be concentrated, to be mm-hmm. focusing on what you're doing. But most important is that you're cooking for somebody. You're not just doing uh, cooking. You're cooking for somebody. And that's the most important part in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a very cool. nice. You got another one? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> Here. Uh, what about... Uh, what about uh, uh, oh... How about this? This is a good one. Um, okay, so here's here's a here's a here's a solid question. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. <laughs> solid question. Um, why do you love food? What do you love about food? Perché ami il cibo? Perché lo ami? Perché il cibo e la buona cucina rende felici le persone. E io sono una persona felice. Because the food and the, the good cook. Uh, makes people really, really happy. And I'm a happy person, and I want everybody to be happy. I love it. I love it. What about you? What about you? Allora, vicino al cibo, al buon cibo, ci vuole anche un buon bicchiere di vino. Questo è importantissimo. Però bisogna bere sempre con moderazione. Bisogna gustare quello che si beve, non solo tanto per... So, uh, with a beautiful dish, uh, you need also to pair it with a beautiful glass of wine. That's very important. Uh, you need to really, really, really love uh, the, 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 that, that combination, but always in moderation, of course. Uh, how do you know which wine goes with the food? Because like, they have general rules, you know, like red wine with red meat and white wine with chicken or things like that. But how do you really know... Uh, what come, to drink. come sai que, que, che, che vino va con qual, quel cibo perché ci sono delle regole che son, ci sono delle regole Thank che il, il rosso va con il red meat <laughs> e la cosa più difficile è spiegare alle, mh, agli ospiti che sono seduti a tavola che è importante eh, abbinare un vino a un cibo e, mh, perché se il vino è giusto per l'abbinamento, esalta il cibo. Eh, in una cena mi è stato detto che con uh, la ragosta era ottimo il vino rosso. Le scelte non si discutono, <laughs> ma è impossibile. <laughs> so Come for... on, Michelangelo. Michelangelo. <laughs> 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 so... <laughs> What she says is it's very difficult to teach people about uh, because it's very important to pair the right wine with the dish because the wine would, uh, would make the fl- flavor of the dish really, really make it good, okay? Mm-hmm. And, but uh, she was on the dinner some, uh, these days and somebody said that with the lobster, the red wine was very, very nice. Mm-hmm. And she said, mm, okay, it's your choice, but <laughs> I definitely I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> so. So which box should I buy? <laughs> no box of wine. No box of wine. No box of wine. No, See, I, I no and you know what happens is, I'm sorry, it's, it's very important this part because wine is so important. When you go to a restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, they, the first thing that they ask you is what kind of wine do you want? Mm-hmm. And that's wrong because the first thing that they need to ask you is what kind of food you're having. Yeah. Then, and then what kind of wine? Yeah. What kind of wine do you want to have? So yeah. it's all it's a way around, you know, it's it's backwards. Yeah. It's, so you need to go there 
choose first what you're going to eat mm -hmm. and then make a selection of your wine because then you're making the right choice, the right decision. Mm -hmm. Totally makes sense. Now, uh, I have heard a rule of thumb is that you should never cook with a wine that you wouldn't drink. Oh. Is that uh, true? Ha uh, detto che tu non devi mai cucinare con un vino che tu mai beveres. Allora, vi spiego perché eh, mia sorella eh, lavora anche insieme a me. Io non bevo, non amo il, in particolar modo l'alcol, non bevo, io sono astemio completamente. Ecco perché mi affido a lei per tutto, però non, io il vino in cucina non lo uso. So, uh, he doesn't drink at all. Mm -hmm. And that's why he, uh, he always uh, is with his sister, her, his sister because mm -hmm. she knows how to do it. So, she, he is very relaxed about it mm -hmm. because his sister is there. But particularly, he never, never cooks with wine. Really? Wow. Not in really? sauces or anything? No, perché uh, il vino in cucina serve a dare acidità. Serve perché tutta la parte alcolica va via, serve a dare aromaticità. Si può tranquillamente ottenere con l'utilizzo di erbe e di tutt'altro che, che alcol. Non uh, sarebbe corretto fare cucinare con del vino perché chi come me non beve non è, non è giusto che ci sia del vino nel cibo. So for him it's not right to cook with wine because there are people that don't drink. So mm -hmm. it's, it's unfair to cook with wine that does, uh, and give it to somebody that doesn't drink. Wow. But uh, he can achieve all the flavors that sometimes you achieve with the wine with all different uh, ingredients without mm -hmm. uh, introducing any alcohol into the food. Wow. wow. Il cuoco ha una giacca bianca. Eh, la giacca bianca del cuoco è uguale a quella che indossavano e indossano tuttora i medici fanno da mangiare e voi quando entrate in un ristorante vi fidate di chi cucina per voi è giusto che i cuochi siano delle persone di cui fidarsi so he says that he is comparing now the, the uh, a chef with the doctor because uh, the the chefs use the white um, jacket, white jacket mm -hmm. okay uh, the same at the doctors so it's very very good mm -hmm. to trust the decisions that the chef makes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, when you're making, I assume you make your own pasta in your restaurants yeah. and things like that, you're doing these in bigger batches. Do you find that there's something different about making it in a machine versus when you make pasta by hand, like you use a fork and the egg in the middle? Like, I've done that, and it's, it's difficult w when you have to do all that stuff. But, I mean, by machine, is there something that it, it loses in any way in terms of the, the way that it's made? So uh, he says that, of course, when you go to a restaurant, they cook in big bowls because there are a lot of people. But uh, when he, you make the... Why? Uh, like I like when you... I'm explaining in, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, in English. <laughs> okay, That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody knew about it. I just realized. <laughs> Allora, <laughs> allora, <laughs> allora <laughs> quando vai in un ristorante sì. loro cucinano eh, in quantità eh, grandi ovviamente, sì. grosse quantità, allora qu la, eh, si fa il paragone con cucinare a mano o cucinare con una macchina, eh, che perde il cibo quando cucina con una macchina? <laughs> perde l'anima. It lost, uh, loses its soul. Mm -hmm. When wow. you cook with the machine, that's yeah, what it happens. Non è più, non è più cibo, ma um, è soltanto qualcosa per cui nutrirsi. Il cibo è volersi bene e amarsi. It's not food anymore. It's just a thing that you eat to, to you know, nourish your your body. But that's that's it. It's mm -hmm. not more uh, something that you eat because you love it. E bisogna prendersi il tempo per mangiare. Non bisogna correre e mangiare, guidare e mangiare, bere e guidare. Bisogna sedersi e mangiare. You need time to eat. You need to take the time to eat. You can't drive and eat at the same time. You really need to sit and put the foot, your legs under the table. Well, now, you know, here's a, que here's a question that is burning in my brain now is uh, where do you eat when, you, when you're here? Where do you go? Are you is it is it Chipotle in the afternoon? What, <laughs> what's happening? Where do you go for like? Where, vaya a where have you gone to Los eat? Angeles. Where have you gone to eat since Perché, you've been? Have eh, you gone to eat anywhere since you've been here? Voi dove vai? Io apprezzo perché a me piace mangiare a Los Angeles perché comunque vedo che ci sono a me piacciono le contaminazioni in cucina. 
quindi a me, io, a me Los Angeles, e di nuovo ripeto, gli americani, mi piace, quindi io mangio gli hamburger quando vengo qui e mi piacciono tantissimo. So he, when he comes to the United States, I mean, he loves America, he yeah, loves America, of course, of course. Of course. Yes. and what he does is he eats hamburgers, I mean, he loves <laughs> really? hamburgers in the United States. Yeah. I mean, he loves, if uh, he eats in America, he's going to eat hamburgers. He loves it. In and out? American is fantastic. Do you go to in and out <laughs> the, Because he, he says that the meat in the United States, is, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, different kind of cows. Yeah. Um, okay, um, one, one last question, and then we have a fun thing to do with you yeah. real quick, and then we'll be done. Um, th- and I always like asking something like this, but when, when you were presented with the Michelin star, when that, when that happened that day can you tell us what how that changed your life or how you felt come ha cambiato la tua vita for no? both of you please quel giorno che hai ricevuto quella Michelin star per... ok allora quello diventa importante però effettivamente non è mai una cosa personale è una cosa del ristorante della, di tutti quelli che lavorano con te e sicuramente ti cambia in meglio però tu continui a fare il tuo lavoro continui a fare quello che è, è la tua vita continui a cucinare ma il riconoscimento non è mai solo a una persona è a tutto lo staff che lavora quindi è di tutti it definitely changed his life because it's really really amazing to receive that kind of award but uh, it's not an individual award when you have the Michelin star it's you and the restaurant and the people and the team it's a, it's a team thing it's not just an individual team and uh, for him it's very important but after that you keep on going and being chef and cooking wow mm-hmm. amazing well um, okay here's a here's a fun uh, thing me and Matt uh, <laughs> We went to the store, and I, here's the thing is, I'm, I'm like, trying to be very good. I'm on a diet now. All right, I'm on a very solid diet. And, uh, and so there's certain foods that have come out that I can't try, or I'm not going to try them. I want you guys to try them. We're going to get your American opinion. American foods. We could get on your some American opinion foods. On them. Hang on. We're, we're going to ask you about Hang on. I've got to get it on video, though. Hang on. Lui farà un giochino adesso. Loro hanno andato a comprare qualche cibo qua che lui non prova perché è una dieta. Okay. Ma lui ti ha portato okay. il cibo right, per fare oh. questo gioco, per Just, vedere. Okay. <laughs> This, okay, so, um, Chef Filippo, yeah. uh, who was presented with a Michelin star, yeah. we, we have you here. <laughs> We're going to try out fruit gushers. These are... Uh, fruit candies. They're fruity candies. Uh, we're going we're gonna to give them a shot. You tell me. This give is us your American opinion. Thing. Your honest very... opinion of what they taste okay. like. Oh, well, there. Here, you, got, you can you take oh, one. Thank you. Uh, Here, Michelangelo, don't feel left out. Oh, oh, yeah, don't feel left you. out. Thank you, thank you. I'll try some fruit gushers. Uh, <laughs> try some fruit gushers, too. <laughs> they say they're fruit-flavored snacks, and they're tropical flavors. Okay. <laughs> this is supposed to be tr- they're supposed to be tropical. <laughs> okay, well, hang on. What, is it, what, it, what, it, what does it smell like? It smells like wax. <laughs> Le amo. <laughs> Fantastiche. <laughs> Le amo. Non posso farne più a meno. You want to take these with you back to... You take Le vuoi portare con te in Italia? To, to London? Certo, certo. Porto con me a Londra perché non le posso fare al meno. Sono buonissime. What do we got next? Oh, we got sriracha. Sriracha flavored Pringles. This is no joke. There is a there is a, ja- a dragon on it. Oh, wow. Uh, this is some serious Sirac. stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. It oh. says, you know, Chef, can you, yeah. maybe you can explain this. On the lid, hang on, hang on. On the lid, it says... You don't just eat them. Yeah. <laughs> What else do you do? Oh. Dice, What else are you supposed to do with them? It says, it says, you want to give, you want to give it a mangi. shot? This is a, this is a thing that people are eating. What does it smell like? Uh. <laughs> yeah, how do you how do you say shit in Italian? Come <laughs> 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 dice? Merda. Merda. <laughs> I'll try one. I'll try one. <laughs> He agrees with you. You just try have to try. Just try one. You just have to try one. Okay. This is broken. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Come era? Tu prima? What, what you said, uh, the, the translation, yeah, we'll look, the word that you were looking oh, for. Sira- yeah. Sriracha? No, no, oh, the other merda. one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Oh, oh man. Okay, now this is a hundred percent natural bison. Yeah. Uh, uncured 
bacon and cranberry <laughs> protein gluten free. <laughs> Epic bar. It's, it's like Epic a. Bar. You want to try it? It's kind of like yeah. a Slim Jim, but bison. Io sono un cuoco, io assaggio tutto. He's a chef, he tries everything. Io ho mangiato tutto. Io ho mangiato tutto. La carne. Oh man, this is a real guy. Take a little piece. I'll try some of that. No, 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 need for try this. Your first smells. It's all right. No bad. It's not bad? No bad. No, no. All right. Yeah. Not bad. You heard it here. All right, what else we got? What else? No bad. Oh, no, this is a big one. Oh, my <laughs> this oh, is my the, the brand new Oreo <laughs> chocolate candy bar. Um, I don't know why they decided to turn this into a candy bar, but it is a candy bar. Candy bar. Uh, and that sounds good. And oh, that's many, a new oh. Here, you can you one. take one. Oh, oh thank you. you thank take you. One. Okay. Give Thanks. it a shot. Give it a shot. Io, mm, This is a candy bar. It's the Oreo candy bar. Io vi, vi devo confessare anche un'altra cosa. Eh, io oltre al oh, vino. It comes in little pieces. It's like a Toblerone. Yeah. Io oltre al vino. <laughs> take a little piece. Yeah. No. Io oltre al vino. Uh, oh, non oh, amo il cibo. Hungry, non amo il ci- Non amo il. Uh, non amo il do- i dolci. He doesn't like uh, the sweet. The sweet things. Yeah. No. Not a, not a fan of this. It's too sweet. Abbiamo un amico però che mangia oh. molti dolci, questo gli piacerebbe. Mettiamolo via. Mm. But we have a friend that he loves the sweetness. Oh, I okay. mean, it's right there. He loves allora, the sweetness. The verdict on that is... Uh, qua non è che What's non, the verdict on that non one? È, non è che non sia buono. It's not that it's not good. È soltanto artefatto, è chimico. Because, but the problem is that it, it's a lot of chemicals in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it is. Like it. All right, all right. Look, we've got this thing. This is called... Non, this is non-GMO... Vegan and gluten free, so yeah. you know oh. it's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is no, this is from Betty Lou, and it's uh, it's called a strawberry fruit bar, and it's supposed to taste like pie. Yeah, <laughs> quindi like a like a fresh non piece GMO. of pie. Not GMO. Vegan and gluten free. Cosa c'entrano col cibo? <laughs> <laughs> what is what did he say? So <laughs> he said no GMO, uh, gluten free, and vegan. What that has anything to do with food? <laughs> yeah, what yeah. does that have? Should have been written. È buono, fa bene ed è sano. It should be reading like it's good, it's good for your health, <laughs> yeah. and it's healthy, but it smells fruity. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll try a piece of this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they love it. Uh, no, we're good. We're good. Mm. Chef is trying. Mm. Oh, why well, you have a bunch of stuff in it? <laughs> we'll, go to the, we'll go to the big one because we have to wrap it up. Um, all right, this is the big one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, but I'm surprised you have Oreo them. cookies. Yeah. Every uh, few months, they decide to come out with some sort of new version. ridiculous new version. They had birthday cake Oreos. They had uh, what, what was it? What was it? Uh, uh, the all double fudge, uh, double yeah. fudge, all sorts of weird. all kinds of them. Yeah. This one just came out. It's for Easter. A questo per uh, per. Uh, <laughs> they are <It's> Peeps <laughs> Oreos. <laughs> it's okay. This this is Peeps Oreos. Did you know Peeps are there these marshmallow peeps candies marshmallow that look like candy. a little chick? Wow, you are my marshmallow. Just. So, a, a, a me piace a me piace SpongeBob, quindi io sono uno di quelli che mette i marshmallow sul fuoco e li arrostisce, giuro, he, giuro, he giuro, loves giuro. And, uh, he loves marshmallows oh and he God. loves SpongeBob. Oh, it, right, it, maybe you'll like it. Io guardo yeah. SpongeBob con le mie bambine, quindi lo adoro. Le he amo loves SpongeBob. He loves SpongeBob. Yeah, 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 I yeah, hate. Okay. So do yeah. I. Yeah. I love yeah. SpongeBob. Oh my <laughs> God! Oh my God! Just you know, I have read on the internet that if you eat enough of these, that your poop will turn pink. Wow. That ha uh, detto che se tu mangi molto di questo, I don't know questo, if you need to translate that. Uh, divento, divento rosa. Uh, vai dal bagno e diventa rosso. Ok, come Patrick praticamente <laughs> diventa rosso. Like Patrick. Spongebob. <laughs> like a Spongebob. Yeah. Like, like Spongebob. Spongebob. <laughs> Just like Spongebob. <laughs> A me piace questo perché <laughs> He loves it. Do you want CT? You want? No. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> And last thing, I, I have these okay. candies that are imported from Italy. Oh. Eucalyptus candy from Olia. Italy that are Olia. actually uh, I course. enjoy these a great Impor- deal. Imported from Italy. Yes. They have a bunch of different kinds from but no, these no, are the eucalyptus no, no, no. ones. No. They're very 
No. No? Mento, Italy, no. Mm, chips, no, I shall. It's the first time. Mm. You've never seen this before? No. Okay. Se questa caramella viene dall'Italia, io sono um, il re dell'America, ok? He says that if this candy comes from Italy, he is the king of the United States. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> All right, we're good. All right. Um, guys, uh, having getting a chance to sit down with you and, and really talk about food and hear it from, you know, from your perspective and why it's important to you, I, I think is, uh, is so important and so cool. And, I mean, me and Matt talk about food all the time. Like, we're constantly talking. Like he's, and he's always cooking and he's always baking and always making stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, the second that I met you guys, the first thing I thought was how cool it would be to get to sit down with you. So I, I appreciate it. I know that you guys are about to leave to go to London. 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 Yeah. Where yeah. are you? Who are you? Uh, as, as, aside from Prince Harry, who else are you uh, <laughs> taking care of out there? Uh, we're going to the Rack, which is a Royal Automobile Club in uh, London. Uh, it's a club that has about 17,000 members. Oh very God. elegant, mm-hmm. very, you know, <laughs> at, uh, high, high end. And they have invited us to go do an event there in London. So we're leaving um, tonight, actually. Unbelievable. Yeah, terrific. Amazing. Yes, yes. Well, I can't thank you enough for, you know, sitting down with us here at the lovely Beverly Hilton. Um, no, it we was want to thank you for thank you. having oh, us with you. Great. We are big fans, and we really <laughs> love you guys. We Where, really thank do. You. Where thank can you. Uh, people find you on the on the internet if they want to follow you on? The, well, it's on a the www.ilpalatoitaliano.it or .com, which is I L P S and Peter A L A T S and Tom O Italiano <laughs> dot com. Okay. And if you want to, uh, if if you want to follow uh, Chef uh, Philippe on the uh, Filippo on the on uh, Instagram, yeah. uh, I would I would do it if I were you. It's it's awesome. F I L I P P O S I N I S G A L L I, and uh, you can see. Uh, some of the amazing, beautiful dishes, and the I mean, the pictures are absolutely they look like a work of art, they're gorgeous. Mm. They make Be- my Instagram look like garbage, yeah, they really <laughs> do, they really, really do. Um, Matt, where can are you are either of you guys on the Instagram or the Twitter stuff that people uh, Chef you? Filippo has an Instagram, uh, yeah, uh, aside from uh, him, anybody else. Uh, TT, do you, uh, do you do Instagram or Twitter? Purtroppo anyway? io non sono uno molto, no. come si dice, social, social media. media. <laughs> social media. You don't have time passo, for this nonsense. Yeah, you don't have time for social media. You're cooking, for God's sakes. But if you put hashtag Il Palato Italiano, uh, yeah. It, yeah. Will, it will go there. And... Absolutely. Matt, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, well, you can find pictures of my garbage food compared to <laughs> <Yeah>. his <laughs> nah. at uh, funnymat.com. I've got all there. And then you can let me know what you think of it by going to mattwalkersucks.com. Oh, that's the best. Um, <laughs> you can always get me at Stephen Glickman, S T E P H E N Glickman, on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to the Nighttime Show podcast. Leave your comments and uh, and share, 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 and and eat, eat, eat. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. This was a blast. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Thank you.